So, I've ordered a bunch of cheap sunglasses from AliExpress in search for the new lenses for my glasses. I've got them for super cheap since those are fairly easy to make. I've also got a couple of different designs to see which one will work best for me. I need only lenses, so all other parts will go straight to garbage. I'm looking for more stylish look and nice lens curvature so I can start making my glasses with non-flat frame. Ok, so the first one looks nice enough to use. Lenses have very good curvature and proper man look. They could go slightly more downward, but it's a nice first try. Also the frame arrived damaged, but it doesn't matter, I need only lenses. Now let's see the next model. Those are very similar in shape to the first ones. I think the lenses are slightly bigger, but I might be imagining things. Yeah, the lenses are longer going downwards. That's perfect, since it's what I'm looking for. These so far are the best ones. Let's see what we got in other packages. Let's check out the next pair. Next up we have these whole grey glasses. They look really great, but I feel that the lenses could be slightly bigger. I really like the color though, and I feel those would go great with some orange accents. Here you can see however that the lenses are way smaller than in previous models. It will be super difficult to hide the electronics with lenses this small. Right now those are the highest in my ranking, with the grey ones lowest. We still have two more pairs to go, so let's check them out. These ones will be slightly different than before, I will save them for later. And once more we have the same pair of glasses. These ones are my favorite so far, so it's perfect. I can really use those big lenses. These ones however come indented. As you can see the plastic is very soft. You can easily bend it. That of course shouldn't be a problem. And now for the very last package. I can tell you already that it's not really a pair of glasses. As you can see, it's a simple snap-on device. This is meant to go over your regular glasses. I'll need only lenses however, so it doesn't really matter. As you can see, the lenses are very similar to the previous glasses. The normal glasses were way cheaper however, so they lose by default. Now that I've chosen the glasses, let's make some magic. And for this I need white spray paint. Let's take the lenses out first. I don't really need the frame itself, so I will put it away somewhere. The lenses are the only thing that matters now. I've put the painted lens on my desk and planted some markers around it for 3D scanning. It's a very difficult piece to scan, since it's almost flat and it's very thin. Here you can see the 3D scan results. One side is missing, since it was laying flat on desk. This of course is a problem, since we need both sides. I've glued some plastic markers to both sides in hope that I can get a full lens scan. I can of course remove the markers in post-production, so everything should be fine now. It took me a couple of minutes, but the 3D scan is now ready. I've removed the marker geometry, which left me with the simple lens shape. Only the inside part of this lens matters, since it will be used to make the frame. I've printed the 3D scan to compare it with the real thing. As you can see, it's almost identical. I've designed a super simple 3D frame, which will let me check if lens goes inside it without any issues. 
It's a simple piece and it can be printed on any kind of 3D printer. I know it looks rough, but that doesn't matter right now. I've removed the markers in hope of cleaning it, but I think it's not happening. I will have to use a new one. In the meanwhile, the 3D printer has finished its job. I can now test if there are any dimensional inconsistencies. It seems that the real lens fits pretty much perfectly. This means I can now start working on the real frame. I started by finding the correct lens curvature. This will let me recreate whole lens with correct shape, which in turn will let me design the perfect frame. I've made a new frame using the gathered data. Time to print it out and see if everything fits together. I've also made a 3D model of the lens, it will be useful later on. The new frame is now ready, it looks much better than the previous one. I've used a smallest layer height in order to get the perfect curvature shape. The original lens fits almost perfectly. I will have to make it slightly bigger however since not all of the lenses are made equal. The new and improved version fits perfectly. The lens now fits comfortably in the plastic frame. From this point forward I will be using a brand new lens. I bought like 10 pairs, so I can use as many as I want. I've also designed a brand new frame. This time it's super sleek. It's super thin, so it may break while printing. I will also print the same one using my resin printer, just in case the filament one will break. It will take a while for it to finish, so it's best to start as soon as possible. I will close the doors for now, just to prevent the UV lights from getting in. The filament frame is already finished. It looks super fragile. I've removed all of the supports, but one part of the frame broke in the process. It still works of course, but it doesn't look as good as it's supposed to. Thankfully the resin frame is already finished. Now I will just need to remove it from the print platform. I've removed all of the supports, and I am now curing it for more strength. Right away I can tell that the resin print is way more durable. It looks way nicer as well. It's actually pretty flexible as well, which is surprising, since it's made out of hard resin. It also fits super well with the ready-made lens. You can see how perfect the curvature is. Now that I have the frame ready, I can start adding more stuff, like display holder and built-in combiner. I will be using of course my FLCOS micro display. It's the same one which I used in my Onyx classes. I want my display in more or less this position. It should be positioned directly in front of your eye. So I've made couple of prototypes. The one you see on the camera right now is the closest to the final version. It has a proper FLCOS holder, ribbon cable mount and simple plastic pins for the enclosure. The last thing to add is magnifier slot. And here you can see the next version. This one has place for all of the electronics. This also includes the magnifier. Here you can see the full assembly. Now I need to make the electronics cover. Simple plastic housing should work perfectly. Ok, so in the meantime I've designed a new final version. This time it has everything that I need. It of course takes a forever to print since it's designed for resin printers. The quality is impressive though. It of course needs quick alcohol washing before I can assemble it. And of course some ultraviolet curing. And here is the final product. It may seem the same as before, but I've improved some tolerances and stuff like that. I've also made a new resin cover for the electronics. It's super fragile though. I've took the lens out from the previous prototype, so it has some glue residue on back of it. And here is the driver board. It's used to provide power and video signal to the micro display. 
You can get it on AliExpress along with the display. This small part right here is the magnifier. This piece too comes with the display. And here is the display itself. It's the FLCOS micro display marked new version on AliExpress. It comes with the 60mm ribbon cable. I will focus on the lens for now. The front lens should fit effortlessly in the plastic frame. If it's too big or too small then you have the wrong lens. It of course will fall out so you need to use the glue. Any cyanopan glue should do the job. Remember not to use too much of it, since it will look bad on the lens. And here is the frame with the front lens attached. There is some slight glue residue right here, but it can be cleaned off. And now comes the electronics part. I will install the micro display first. Make sure you put it inside the correct way. Also don't squish the FFC cable. It breaks really easy and it's super hard to get a replacement. And just like that, the micro display is now installed. Now it's time to install the magnifier. Magnifier simply slides into the plastic frame. And that's pretty much it. Now you can install the electronics cover. This part is super fragile, so make sure not to apply too much force. So it turns out I have to cut these small plastic wings right here. Those make it impossible to install the plastic cover. Now it should fit without any issues. You can lift up the clamps slightly using your knife. This will prevent it from breaking. And now it's almost finished. There is only one part left to install, the plastic combiner. The combiner is a simple plastic square with semi-transparent coating on it. It reflects the display image but lets you see the environment as well. Here you can see it clearly with all the electronics put inside. I've slightly damaged my plastic cover from removing it. It shouldn't be a problem though. It also doesn't close all the way now, I've got no idea why. And here are all the parts connected together. I'm also using my HDMI converter, which lets you connect the display to regular Windows PC. The image is slightly flickering, but that's due to my camera. It works fine when set to 25 FPS. Of course it's super hard to focus the camera on the display image, since it's a semi-transparent reflection. It looks way better in person, but you more or less should get the idea. And that's pretty much the end of this video. It was a super simple and fun build to make. I hope to use it in my future revision of the Onyx classes. Thanks for watching everyone and see you next time. And as always huge thanks to my patrons.